since the day we met, and I haven't been the same since. She had a dream about a night. They came to her. And the night was to show her things, you know what I mean? She said it was an actual night in the dream. And she said, you know, when she came out of that dream, she said the night, it was almost like the night, when she was to learn something from the night, and the night was showing her something. She woke up, and she put two and two together. It was like, wait a minute, it, what night? Because she always matches the dream up to reality. So she figured, hey, this must be Suge. So when, she, when her and Suge came together, it was just like, she felt in her spirit, this is where she was supposed to be. She felt that she was to go there to help him. So when I first heard about it, uh, her signing, it was really a real surprise to me. So her mission might have been different from everybody else's mission. Lisa's mission was to go, come in with her holistic approach, try to get sure to eat right. She brought so much energy to the label. She, she, she would come in the studio, she would absolutely light candles, incense, and she had every gangster and thug in there mellowed out, you know what I'm saying? Spiritual, you know, she introduced me to a holistic doctor named Mr. Uh, Dr. Sabi, you know what I'm saying, who had the label like on the right page with herb, herbal teas, and I mean, she, what she brought to the label was definitely creativity, spirituality, it was cool. It was a great vibe, especially going through all that drama on death row, you know what I'm saying? With all the shootouts and people going to jail and studios getting raided and all that. You know, everyone's like afraid of you, like you're this uh, monster on wheels. Everybody was calling Suge negative or this or that. We went out with, and you, we're seeing an entirely different side of Suge, which is great, why we wanted you on the show. We went out to uh, barber shops and we right. asked uh, questions at black barber shops. Right. And I want you to see this this one question we asked someone at the black barber shop. Who would you rather share a sleeping bag with, Bobby Knight or Suge Knight? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Knight, man. Now you didn't even want to say Suge Knight on camera. I didn't even look to the camera to say that, man. He's like the candy man. <laughs> Bobby Knight, man. <laughs> What's with you guys? She felt that Suge, she told me Suge is the most spiritual man you ever meet. And a lot of people don't know that about Shug. The old days think he's a thug, he's a gangster, but she saw more in him than that. So, you know, that was Lisa's approach to the whole situation, and she just wanted to bring good, positive energy to the role. That's still a sensitive issue for me, because, um, you know, when I met her, she wasn't like, you know, like you see on TV and all that. She was real, super humble. She used to just sit there in the studio and be like, Jim, don't even make no beats. I just want to see you play keys. And I would just sit there and play piano, and we'd be in there talking and laughing. You know, she was very educational. She knew about taking herbs and vitamins and all that kind of stuff, you know. And when she passed on, it was, it was terrible. I was on my uh, way to Atlanta, and I thought that she would be there because she's, you know, from Atlanta, and she wasn't in California. And I was in my mind on the airplane thinking about the song that I just wrote. I wrote a song called Hot Grits. And it was about throwing hot grits on her man because he caught him cheating, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, okay, when I get here, I'm gonna talk to Lisa about this song I wrote, you know, boom, boom, bam. I get to my room, I get a phone call, and somebody's telling me that she was in an accident in Honduras and that she might not have survived it. And when I got that message, you know what I'm saying, in that news, I just sat in my room in Atlanta for about an hour, just staring at the wall. Lisa Lopez, one of the most flamboyant members. She was in Honduras on a humanitarian effort. She went down there often. There's a child development center, and she always went down there to help. For some unknown reason, the car she was in last night rolled about 150 miles north of the capital of Honduras. We just pulled out of the village. We were headed to Sambo Creek, which is another uh, village that has a beach, food, and a lot of great people, good spirits. So we were going up there to film um, Egypt. Like everybody got dressed up, everybody was looking cute. Um, we went up there, we pulled out. As soon as we pulled out, it was just like the roads out there are not like they are here. Like it's just like a, a dirt road almost. It's no speed limits, no regulations, no rules. It's, it's just like, hey, everybody knows, go this way, go that way. And a, 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 like a truck, like a plantain truck, like, you know, that carries a lot of fruit around. They were in front of us, and um, they made a sudden stop. So Lisa went around that truck, and when, as she went around, it was a car coming like real fast towards us. So to avoid a collision, she just, you know, went off to the left, swerved, and she kind of the truck, the way she swerved, it was a stick shift. It was like a, and actually, there's a recall in that model that, that we had. It was a Montero, 
the, the stick, it's like the, the gears locked up on us and it flipped over and hit, it, it hit a tree and the whole truck flipped over. And she was the only one that was killed. There were six other people in the car as well. They were taken to the hospital. I was in the car. It was 10 people in the car for the record. A lot of people say it was eight, seven. It was 10 people in the car. It was the camera crew, Egypt, Lisa's sister, and that was it. And that made up 10 people. All 10 people suffered from injuries. Um, of course, you know, you know, God bless Lisa, God bless the dead. Um, but nine survived, you know, so. I guess that's the miracle in the midst of the tragedy. You know, Lisa saved everybody's life because if she didn't make that turn, then everybody would have got killed. The way that car was coming towards the truck, it would have been a head-on-head -head collision. It would have been very, very bad. It would have been worse. It would have probably been 10 deaths instead of one. It took me a while to get off of that, you know what I mean? Because I, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, you know, I just went to 106 in Park, a BT program with her, you know what I'm saying? We were chilling, you know what I mean? I was just in the limousine. We are laughing, cracking jokes. Next thing you know, this person is gone. Now, Lisa Left Eye Lopez has been called the controversial and sometimes volatile member of TLC. The group behind such hits as Waterfall, No Scrubs, and Unpretty. The surviving bandmates released a statement early this morning saying, we had all grown up together and were as close as a family. Today, we have truly lost our sister.